titten. Titten, titten, titten. Hello and welcome to Comic Book Movie Oblivion, the podcast about feature films based on comic books and comic strips that people have stopped talking about. We're your hosts, Jordan and Kumar. That's me. And me. And this week we are talking about The Most Desired Man from 1994, which people in Germany are probably talking about. I think they are. This yeah. was a big film. Yeah. So let's do a pause the podcast. What do you think? I think it's, I think we're going to spoil it, but I think it functions like a sitcom and I don't think we can I don't, I don't know think, it's hard to get hold of anyway I don't think you can spoil it really as you say it's pretty formulaic yeah, there aren't uh, really there's not really any I'm not sure spoilers. I wouldn't say for yeah. formulaic is probably perhaps not formulaic but it's not surprising yes really. yeah I think we can sort of see where it's going once we meet our characters and see their travails. Yeah. So I would say don't pause the podcast. Okay. Listen to our um, episode, and if you're intrigued, see if you can find this film. Okay. So, The Most Desired Man was based on two comics by Rolf Koenig, who yep. we talked about last episode. We sure did. On them. Uh, this is another double. So there were yes. two. There was maybe, maybe not from 1987. Yeah, that was its uh, English title. In German, it's Der Bewerte Mann, which means... This one's hard to translate. It means the man, the moving man, or the moved man. Oh, okay. I'll, I can talk a little bit more about okay. what that title means, perhaps, but... Uh, yeah, and the sequel, the second one was called Pretty Baby. Yes. Apparently but, in English. Oh, right, yes. Yeah, it was given an English title, but it was called Maybe, Maybe Not Again in the English translation. Yeah, isn't that odd? It's had an English title in German. Well, I think it's, in terms of marketing, it's like, makes it clear that it's a sequel. Of course. Yeah. Which it obviously is, yes. Yes. This was translated by Jeff Krell. Um, excellent translation job on both these It seems points. like it. It's hilarious, actually. Yeah. Really funny. Yeah, really great translation. He is also a uh, queer cartoonist in his own right. I um, gathered that from the introduction that yeah. he wrote. Um, so, so this is, again, published by the same outfit that published the two Killer Connor books. But again, we've got two uh, being merged into one movie, much like last week. Mm. Although, interestingly, yes. this was the movie that Martin Waltz, the director of Killer Connor, wanted to make. He was like, oh, I'm going to do Maybe, Maybe Not, and then he went, and the rights were already snatched up by this other production company, which made the movie that we're going to be talking about. Right, well, this movie came out first. Yes, that's right. Of course, because uh, this one came out in 94. Yes. And Killer Condom was... 96. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, interesting thing here. So, this comic, it starts with somebody, uh, a medical crisis in an apartment building, mm. uh, the... What do you, the the ambulance drivers show up. They we get a few wide panels, don't we? It's about four wide, pa very very wide panels. Four wide panels, kind of horizontally, vertically rather, vertically stacked one on top of one of the other. And in each one, we got a sort of snapshot. Yeah. Uh, very different from the way Killer Condom started yeah. with those fake movie titles. So we see him sort of lying, spread eagled. He has something in his hand. Then, snap, a passage of time, the medical professionals are there. He's being lifted onto a stretcher. We see the landlord screaming too, but we don't know what really is happening. No, we don't. Until and later. That what? This, what is the screaming face of this woman? We don't yeah. know what that is. We don't. Uh, we see him taken away on a stretcher. We see him in hospital. Looking see, miserable. And then everyone Oh, that's later, in. yeah. But then all the... And then all the, the medical the surgeons rush yeah. in. Yeah. Then they walk out looking disgusted. Yes. Saying... What do they say? They say, uh, what a waste of time. Why can't these people just... Yes, it's um. Haven't we had enough of these juvenile pranks? That's it. As if we've got nothing better to do. If I had my way, I'd put jerks like him on a park bench and let them sleep it off. And we don't know really what's happened. We don't. Until... So that was really odd, considering that he was clearly having some kind of medical emergency, and yeah. then they look revolted and they yeah. walk out. Yep. Yeah. And then the next panel is, is the title page, and he's sighing in bed in the hospital bed looking miserable yes and we don't know we don't learn until later what's actually happened here something i wanted to mention that uh we didn't mention last week but you've kind of touched on is that in killer condom in those comics we had the cinematic titles and like mm. credits yeah but Koenig's cartooning is not cinematic at all no it's the opposite he will draw two people having conversations you know just have the same panel six times 
or for four pages the same panel yeah. six times with two people and we'll have a lot of dialogue box over their heads it's the facial expressions and gestures will change but it's mm. not like a movie where you're you've got the close-ups and the two shots and you're going back and forth and all that kind of stuff. Shot revenge shot or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. yeah, nothing like that. It's very... Um, he's static. He, yeah, it's static, um, but also he's, as a cartoonist, he's one of those cartoonists that has figured out a way to cartoon quickly, including in his figure drawing, which we'll talk about a little bit more as we go on too. But one of the ways his shortcuts is just have... If you have a conversation, you don't need to make every panel look interesting. Just have the same panel over and over. Yeah, and a lot of dialogue. Yes, and, I mean, and he by and the, it's fun. I mean, it's funny in translation. It's funny. Yeah, this is some funny dialogue. Yeah, uh, in German, I read that he's very witty. Right. Very apparently, very f screamingly funny. Yeah. And um, according to one review I read, uh, a lot of the dialogue in the film is lifted straight from the comic. Actually. Yes, we can I sort of that. tell. That. Yeah, you can tell because the translation is similar to the similar English enough. Translation. It's not yeah. identical because you've got different translators, and I don't actually. I may as well get this out now. I don't think the translation in the film is anywhere near as good as the translation in the comic. I'm uh, not. It's much more clunky. Sure, I. It might be. It's so hard to talk about because you don't. We don't know. speak German. That's correct. But I have a like. There's definitely stuff that's truncated because it's a movie, right? Sure. But um, I see. I can't attest to this because I don't speak German. But I did read one review that said that the movie is very witty. The dialogue is yeah. apparently very good. Yeah. There's a lot of brinksmanship. The 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 conversation is always. There's a lot of trying to one up one another with right. wry observations yeah. and things. It's just not coming across in the, in huh. the English subtitles. I okay. I'm gonna defend the movie. Sure. I'm gonna say the dialogue comes very fast. So even in translation. It's hard to catch all the little bits that are coming at you. I'm sure, it's that a maybe one. that one-upmanship is happening. But as I was saying earlier, stuff's cut out. Like to jump way ahead. Like in the comic, we get a conversation between a doctor and a nurse. There's conversations that go on. The scene's going long, right? Like it's just doctor and nurse are having a conversation, and then we get some gags out of that in the comic. That's not in the movie. Yep. Or one of Doro's friends. I'm jumping way ahead. Has a kid named Egon who comes over and keeps <laughs> interfering with this bird. The pet bird, yeah. and she keeps yelling at him, and we only get one yell in the movie, right? She only yells at him one time. Egon, stop yeah. fussing with that bird. So my guess is that the movie might be quite witty, but I have a feeling it's already in German, already not as clever as the comic is. Sure. Well, we'll get into that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now we suddenly cut away from the hospital to this guy waking up in the morning uh, to the radio. He does his morning ablutions. We learn that his name is Norbert. His friend, Waltrina, comes over. Um, now, <laughs> okay, here's, here's the question. I don't know how the gender pronouns work in German. These guys often refer to each other as she and her. Yeah. yeah. But they're not transsexuals. They are. They seem to identify as... No, they're men. Yeah, you're they're right. Men. They they're men. They seem to identify themselves men, as gay but men. They, use, they, they often have uh, Waltrina, which in... Uh, in German, I think it's in German. It's like Voltaire. Or, or, it's, it's it sounds Voltraud. like it looks like Vol, Vol, Voltraud. Voltraud. Yeah, or something like that. And so they've they've anglicised it to Voltrina. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's as if it's as absurd if Voltraud is as ludicrous in German as Voltrina is. In I English. have to guess it's a kind of feminine ending. To I'm the sure name. it is. Yeah. Uh, yes, you're right. They, and they they like to dress up in drag, although they're not, as you say, they're not transsexuals. Yes. Yeah. Go figure. I don't. I'm not sure about the pronouns myself either. That's something I could have looked up. I don't know. I don't know. But um, it's. I have to guess that Ralph Gurnig, like this is. These, it, it's, it feels like these are all people he's known, to some extent. I knew a guy like that, and he puts him in the comic or something like that. Yeah, I mean, people. There are a lot of caricatures in this book. Yeah. Both, on both sides of the aisle. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of there's a lot of skewering of the silliness of of the behaviour of the heterosexual people and the homosexual yes. people. It is an us versus them kind of yes, scene. But they're both happen. equally, quite often That's they're right. equally ridiculous. Oh yeah. And I think the uh, Waltrina and, and the drag and things like that, I think it's a bit of gentle ribbing. Yes. And Koenig, it's fine for Koenig to do that, of course, because he himself is gay. And it's quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of <laughs> gags. You know, a lot of hilarious... Very ha, 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 men in women's clothing kind of jokes. Yes. And things like that. Yes, and there's... Okay, we'll get to all that. All of Walter slash Walter, because sometimes he goes by Walter. Yeah. 
Well, he only goes by Walter when he wants to be Butch. Yes. Because later on, of course, I mean, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but uh, this guy who, the, the, the guy who's in the hospital, Axel by Axel, name. Axel, yeah. Of course, <laughs> is uh, enormously desirable, both to men and women. Yes. And hilariously, of course, he's drawn in Ralph Koenig style, so he looks kind of like a shaved Bigfoot. He, yes, this is a really interesting thing about this comic, is everybody talks about how handsome he is. Mm. He looks like a gross Wizard of Big character, like a Ralph Koenig character. Yeah, he, looks he just looks like grotesquery, like... He looks like Hagar the Horrible. He, he looks really bad. Um, but I will say, Koenig knows that he draws characters this way, in the sense that later on we get a scene where they go to see, or they're watching Casablanca, and he uses a still from the movie, yeah. but he's drawn he's his drawn own noses. grotesque noses over... <laughs> You know, over That's the characters, so it's really... I really like He's like, I he knows how that. ugly he makes yeah. them. But it, it's very funny, the contrast between Axel, who is this Adonis, yeah. apparently. Or, well, he's not. He, he's hideous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we know from the way everyone reacts to him, yeah. both men and women, that he's really, really good looking. Yes. Uh, and the and all of the female characters are the same. They, they look like caricatures. Yeah. You know, even... One, you know, some of them are supposed to be very desirable. Doro, I, I don't know if she's meant to be desirable or not, but he meets an old flame, Elka, later in the in the book, and she just she looks kind of like a broom. Well, <laughs> she's interesting. Elka's interesting because earlier we saw this character on the street that was done up in makeup with frizzy hair, and the gay man commented on how hideous she was. <laughs> and then the next chapter we meet this character, Elka, who looks just like that hideous woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So yes. yeah, it's a little bit hard to place who's supposed to be attractive or not. It's all based well, we on the dialogue. Have to get it from the, cue, get it from from the, the dialogue cues. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. So Waltrina comes over, and talks to Norbert, and talks about how he's been attending these heterosexual men's group meetings. Oh, yeah. now, this is a men's group of of heterosexual men that are trying to find their trying to get in touch with their feminine side. Perhaps yes. they're uh, what we used to call it. Snags, I suppose, sensitive new age guys. Right, okay, yes. They're, they're very... trying to stop being misogynist, yes. they're trying to stop being patriarchal, sexist, they're, not, they're trying to correct their own language about women, they're that very, kind of stuff. Yeah, they're very weird. They're trying to understand women, understand homosexuals. Yeah. So they've invited a homosexual into the group to tell them yeah, about homosexuality. They want to know. <laughs> yeah, they're very, they're very, I guess people would say woke. No, it's not, it doesn't quite cover it. Not they're right. really, they're, they're just like cardigan wearing. Yes. Sensitive guys. Yes, or trying to be sensitive guys. Trying or trying to, to change their ways. And the, but while Trina is like, he's, he's there to take he's, advantage. He's messing with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think he says, well, what are you doing? He says, oh, they just want to know about the homosexual experience. They want to learn more about it. They want the whole nine yards of taffeta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's just, it's very funny. You know, right. we have some dialogue, we have some of their dialogue with one another, and it's all just this angst. It's it's very Freudian almost, all this heterosexual angst about how guilty they feel for looking at women's breasts. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes exactly. <laughs> and things like that. Exactly. It's, very, it's quite funny. Yeah. So, then we cut to two women talking in the street. This woman, Doro, and her friend. And we learn that Doro's ex-boyfriend, who she just broke up with, she went, she went out of town, and he tried to kill himself. Yeah. Apparently. And she didn't get a suicide note. No. Um, now we understand. But everyone else did. Everyone else did. She's like, "What was the line? Everybody else got one." Like she's like, "Why didn't I get one?" Um, we. So now we understand that the opening scene was this guy trying to kill himself. Oh, was he? Dun, dun, dun. Yes. Over this breakup. Yeah. Because she's dumped him. That's right. Yeah. Because she dumped him. So she goes to the hospital. Um, and but he's already been discharged. He's already been discharged. Yep. There's a kind of thudding gag where the nurse says he's moved on or something yeah, along yeah. those lines and and Dora's like, oh no! Yeah. And then a doctor comes out and says, you got to stop using that terminology yes. for people that have checked out. Yes. <laughs> um, again, Jeff Crow, excellent translation. I don't know yeah. how tricky that was to pull off, but... Um, okay, so now we cut to the men's group meeting and it turns out that Axel is part of this group. He's been told to go there by Doro because he's a bit of a pig. They broke up because... The reason, the stated reason is that he, or sorry, he thinks the reason that she dumped him is because he was always jealous of other guys. Anytime any guy looked at her, he would fly into a rage. And she got sick of it and broke up with him. Yep. Okay, so he, yeah, he comes, he comes into the group after the suicide. They're trying not to talk about it. Um, while Trina's in the meeting, so of course, he's like, ooh la la, who's this guy? 
who hasn't been in the meetings before because he's yeah. been in the hospital. She, yeah. He hasn't so met Katrina him. hasn't met him before. No. Time. And uh, is like stunned by him. We get some thought balloons like, oh my God, dish, this guy. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And he, meanwhile, he looks like <laughs> he's a bit like an ape. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he's like, I'm going to go make myself a sandwich to the kitchen. And uh, while Trina goes in there to sort of chat him up. To, yeah. And to, he's actually also trying to get out of this conversation that he was trying to fake an interest in about female orgasms as well. Like he's like, I got to get out of here kind of thing. So while he's in there, he invites him to come to a gay, gay party. He tells him. He Axel tells him party. all about the breakup and all that stuff and all the reasons. He says, you got to get out of the house because he's still living in the apartment that he shares with yes. Doro. And she's out of town, or at yeah. least he thinks she's out of what? Or, or, does he know she's out of town? It's ambiguous. He wanted her... Anyway, we'll get into that. Yeah. Uh, and he says, you need to get out of the house. Why don't you come to a party on Friday night? Yeah. And he goes, what is it, a gay party? He's like, I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> There's yeah. going to be gay people there. <laughs> 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 Yeah. So he's like, yeah, maybe, whatever, I'll, uh, he, you know, I'll take, you go, here's your number, here's my number, uh, call me if you decide you're going to come. Mm-hmm. So, at the end of that, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Axel goes back to the apartment, Doro comes in, she reveals that she knows that he faked, the, the suicide attempt was kind of a sham, it was a show, it was well, all a show. It's he, took, the... he didn't take enough pills to kill himself, he oh. knew that, he waited until he knew the housekeeper was going to come in, he timed it so that he would be found. Yeah. It was a it was an attention seeking gesture. Yeah. So she even said she said I couldn't be more. She said I don't want to talk to you. I couldn't be more pissed off at you right now because yeah. I know exactly what's happened here. Yeah. You know that didn't even pump your stomach. <laughs> you only took two pills. Yeah. You timed it so that the landlady would find you. You sent suicide notes to everybody. Yeah. And the only reason I didn't get one is because I went out of town. Yeah. And you didn't know I was leaving, so you knew people would react with horror and come yeah. rushing. So it's all just a crock of shit. Yeah. And you're scum, and I'm leaving. And he and he's just sinking lower and lower in his chair as she's delivering this diatribe at him. Yeah. So Axel, not really a good person. <laughs> no, um, I would say actually everybody has a level of manipulation. Everybody in this Everybody's comic is horrible. Manipulative. And well, I, I wouldn't say horrible. Some of them are like. Well, horrible is a strong word. You're yeah. right. You're right. Everyone, no one is perfect. No one is really like, genuinely likable. Yeah, I think maybe Norbert's the closest, but even well, he even is, Norbert even is he's trying manipulative. To, he's trying to take ways. advantage of absolutely. Yeah. He's he's trying to take advantage of Axel. But although Axel's we learn about Norbert's too. past, and he he crushes hard mm. on guys really quickly, and he almost can't help it, and he goes for these guys that are really bad from like this. <laughs> punker that stole all his gear yep. like his record player and stuff and some Jehovah's Witness right. that almost had him going door to door like he yep. just can't help it he keeps falling for people you're right and he falls hard and then he his life always ends up getting messed up by yep. it yeah so of course spoilers he does end up falling for Axel but yep. yes even even his so I get he would be the most likable character in the comic yeah I would yep. agree but even he's a bit pathetic a bit manipulative yeah yeah um there's a scene, in, a bit here in this conversation when Doro comes in, where he says, "I wrote a great, I wrote you a great suicide note." <laughs> but we've seen the note, and it's the most cliched, like I can't take it anymore. <laughs> There's nothing great about this note. It's really, yeah, um, it's pretty funny. So, okay, so now we cut to the guys are getting ready. So this is while Trina, Norbert, and Franz slash Francine yep. are getting dressed up in dresses to they're go to this up. party, yeah. this this housewarming party that they're going yep. to. Um, the phone rings and it's Axel looking for Walter, but Walter's answered the phone as well. Trina, he's a, he's answered it in a camp voice. Yes, because he's he's very camp. Yes, he's he's amazing. <laughs> it's looks hilarious. He's got this big beaky nose. Yeah. His, his head kind of looks like a triangle. Yeah, and he's got this John Waters <laughs> kind of pencil mustache. Yeah, looks hilarious. Yeah, and to jump ahead, I cannot believe how much yeah how they found an actor that looked exactly well, perfect casting. <laughs> Actually, the <laughs> casting throughout the movie is really amazing. I just about fell out of my chair yeah. when I saw how much, how they found a, a man either. that looked exactly like this a cartoon drawing. character. He looks like a cartoon. It was really something else. It's almost. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that Koenig knew the guy. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a character <laughs> right. of him personally. Right. <laughs> right. Right. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, okay, so Walter's suddenly like, well, I'm going to I'm gonna take off oh, all the makeup. I'm sorry, I cut you off. He, he answers camp in a camp yeah. fashion, and uh, Axel says, oh, oh, sorry, is Walter there? And he's like, 
one moment. And then he <laughs> he, he sort of run, pretends to call Walter. Like, Walter! And then he goes like, hello. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Axel says he's coming to the party. So Walter quickly starts unglamming. So as you yeah. said, stripping off the, the nail polish, getting out of the frock. Removing his makeup, etc., etc. It's like, what are you doing, Walter? Walterina? What are you doing? He's like, I'm not Walterina. I'm Walter. Yeah. Because he's not going to go for me yes. if he sees me in a dress. Yes. Because Axel's coming, and the line that Norbert gives is, "Her name is Walter, and she's in love." <laughs> <laughs> Makes it into the film. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was there something else? Here? Okay, so Axel shows up. They go to this party. He says that Doro showed up. And had sex with yeah, him, yeah. which is a lie. He tells this this self-inflated macho lie where he gave her ten orgasms and she staggered off. Yeah. Whereas actually what happened is she tore strips off him and he hunched down in his chair. Yes. Yeah, so he's he's not winning any points. Yeah. But I, I like it. I, I, I like it when you've got a story about an unlikable person. Yeah, yeah, if absolutely. You're, if you're reading a story, the person is unlikable and you're still engaged, that's good writing. Yeah, it's... this. I mean, these comics are going to be really smooth. Um... The dialogue is just so fast and engaging. Yeah, that it almost doesn't... There, I feel like these were real people. Yeah. You know? Um, They're not idealized. No. They're very yeah. flawed. Yeah. So they go to this party. We get a uh, like a burlesque drag show um, with this yeah. character called Large Marge. And she brings out a Neanderthal, this bodybuilder on stage. Yeah. Um, Large Marge is a construction worker by day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Called Horst or something. Yeah. <laughs> um. The piano pay player's really like not. I don't know. He's not happy about being there. I don't know what the relationship yeah. is, but he's, and he's like, okay, got whatever. a bodybuilder in a mask because it's just because he doesn't want to doesn't want his face to be seen. And it's just this funny sings a funny song. Yeah. Camp song about my barbar the barbarian who my Neanderthal. No, my Neanderthal. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. Um, by the way, Krell has translated all these song lyrics and poems and stuff that are in here with with mm. rhymes. Yeah. Like, yeah, hard yak. I always, I always skip over that kind of stuff. Like, send it to the editor and say, "You sort this out." <laughs> Krell's, <laughs> Krell's done it. I think it. this is a labor of love for Krell. Oh yeah, yeah. Because he does say in his introduction how uh, his own experience in Germany was such an important part of his own mm. kind of like awake, like his own realization of his sexuality. Yeah, and how impressed he is by Koenig's comics. Yeah. So I'm sure this was uh, something he slaved over. It yeah. wasn't, <laughs> he didn't just do it for a check. <laughs> so, uh, Axel decides to get blind drunk. Yeah. Now, we know he's going to tie one on, he says. This is one of the reasons that Dora broke up with him, is he has these drinking binges, stuff like this. But he decides to get completely drunk, which he does. Uh, one of the other guests at the party kind of is trying to come on to him. Yep. Uh, keeps asking about chest hair. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, Walt Serena is thrilled because he figures he's going to get laid. Yeah, because he can get this drunk guy this home drunk in bed. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Which is pretty disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> but but then, then, hilariously, yeah. uh, Axel susses it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm not going home with you because you just want to sleep with me. Yeah. I'm going to go home with Norbert because he seems like a decent yes. bloke. Now, suddenly, this is actually a swap. I didn't really expect Norbert to be the main character. I thought mm, this book was about Walter. Walterina. Yeah. No, yeah. it turns into the whole thing is about Norbert. Norbert. Yeah. So they go back to Norbert's place. Yeah. And this Axel's is what we essentially find out Axel is not as straight. As, yeah. as he claims. Well, because yeah. he's been in the army, he has a tattoo right near his groin, yeah. which he got... Of a naked woman. Of a naked, yes, it's of a naked woman, but he got that tattoo. The bloke who tattooed him agreed to do it if he let him perform oral sex on it. Yes. Something that's missing from the film, isn't it? Yes. Uh, so, and then, he's blind drunk, but he's telling Norbert this story, and he's showing Norbert the, the tattoo. The tattoo is right by his pubic hair. Right yeah. by it. And uh, Norbert is, like, Norbert is very attracted to Axel. Yeah. And Axel, I don't think he's oblivious. He's completely oblivious in the film, but I think in the oh, comic, yeah. Oh, I yeah, don't think he's no, oblivious. No, absolutely, because Norbert starts going down on him after he shows him the Close. Tattoo. Close. Not quite. Uh, he... Well, the doorbell rings. Well, Wait, what? Okay, okay. Every time the doorbell rings in this it's comic, hilarious. it's hilarious. It's it right. Okay. <laughs> Right. He's, Maybe he's should have done head. a fucking content warning again. Yeah. But, so what happened? Axel grabs his head. Yeah, right. And starts guiding his head towards right. his lap. Right, So, and, and uh, Norbert is actually blushing firehouse red. Yeah, right. Uh, 
I, in black and white. <laughs> yeah, yes. in black and white. Yeah. But you can see. I, yeah. I, I'm really impressed with <laughs> how Koenig shows oh, yeah. people blushing. Yeah. Because it's very vivid, yeah. even though it's black and white. But uh, Axel is essentially is, is willing. Yeah. He, Norbert's not forcing himself on him. In fact, Axel is just... He's told this story about how he got head to get yeah. the tattoo in the army. Yeah. And now he's grabbed Norbert's head. And it's just yep. pushing him down. So I'm doing the motion. Pokemon I has to watch me doing the Yeah, but it's... I'm doing the motion. But then the doorbell rings. And, and it's Franz, Franz, Francine. But, I mean, Norbert's annoyed by this. He's hoping he's to fucking, get it he's on. He's pissed off. Yeah, I yeah, mean, he's... He wants... Of yeah. This, 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 Axel is willing. Here's yeah. the thing. Axel, Axel is not 100% straight. No, but I will say, I mean... This is important. He's con he's not certain about his sexuality, I think. Yes, but the second time this happens, spoiler, <laughs> near the end, we get a thought balloon of him thinking of a naked woman while Norbert's under the sheet. True. So there's he, there's a he, there's a spectrum happening here for him. Absolutely. And he's kind of on that. Absolutely, it's a spectrum. He's far to that's one end. That's why I'm end, not saying. He's, yeah. That's why I'm not saying he's. I'm not saying he's gay. No, and he's of in course the closet. Not. Even though he does. Even though he's homophobic. Yeah. In some of his other thought balloons, well, he's very homophobic. I would say that that's just... Okay, so this is... After the next the next day, when he wakes up, he's like, what happened? And Norbert's like, well, actually, I almost gave you a blowjob. Yeah. And he's like, what? That never happened. He said, you told me you got a blowjob from a guy in the army. And Axel's so enraged by this. Yeah. And he goes out... And that's when we get the F slur yeah. multiple times in his thought yeah. balloons. Yeah. So it's almost like he's reacting against the... Accusation, yes, or the implication that, that he might be a homosexual. In that classic, yeah, kind of like the the classic He's overreacting to it. Uh, overreaction, which is a. He's actually kind of before this. I mean, he went to that party. He's not freaked out by the drag show or all the people sure. in dresses or anything like that. And he's like hanging out with these guys. I mean, there's an incident later on, which is understandably he's upset about, which we might talk about <laughs> in the in the club bathroom. Yeah. But um, no. I don't think he's... It's really hard to get a read on a lot of this stuff. Like, it's it's both, you know what I mean? Yes. Like, he's oh, kind of yes. not homophobic, but he turns that way when, when he's, he's defensive. Yes, when he's defensive, he becomes homophobic. Perfect. Yeah, uh, Yeah. so the doorbell rings. Norbert's pretty grumpy because he's just been yeah. about to get it on with a really attractive bloke. Yeah. Uh, but the guy has nowhere to stay. Yeah. He has to come in, so he says, fine, you can sleep in on the couch. And Axel's going to come sleep in my bed. Yeah. They go back in. Axel's already fallen asleep on yeah, the couch. He's too so that's not going to happen. Yeah. They, you know, Norbert takes the other bloke to bed. They're sitting in bed together. They're not sleeping together. Yeah. Uh, and he's really grumpy. And he sneaks out to see if he can resume where he left off. But Axel's dead to the world. Yeah. Yeah. He sneaks back. And, and then the other guy says, how was that? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, pretty funny. Great. Funny. Okay, so as I said, the next day he gets up. He um, has a shower there. He's kind of blind to Norbert's I homosexuality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he like strips down completely naked in front of him. Um, there's a funny line where he says, uh, "You know, I'm such a jerk around people." He's talking about himself. He's yeah. like, "I'm such a jerk." You know, I did this, this, what an asshole. And then we smash cut to a shot of his behind. <laughs> I just thought it was so funny. Which is, uh, it's Norbert's point of view. Yeah. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, Dora and her friend, Dora reveals that she's pregnant. Yep. Or she thinks she's pregnant. Uh, so now she's, but she can't find Axel. This is an interesting situation. Like, he's actually hanging out with Norbert. He's yep. been going to these parties and stuff and he's not going home. He's not going back to... He hasn't been back to his flat yep. yet since she yelled at him and went out. Yeah. She's looking for him everywhere. She can't find him. Yeah. So, after the conversation which we talked about before where Norbert accuses him of... reveals all the things that he said while he was drunk. He's like, I was drunk and he charges out. Yeah. He walks by this X-rated cinema and he <laughs> decides to go in. He goes in. There's a long sequence about buying the freebies you get when you buy a ticket to go to see the show. Yeah. Anyway, you get a beer and a magazine. He goes in and sits down and yeah. realizes he's sitting down next to one of the guys from the men's group. Of course. And the guy says, "Well, I'm just here researching, doing research about misogyny, so I can make a presentation to the, For the group. men's group." Yeah. Yes. And Axel's like, "Oh yeah, oh, yeah me, too. me too. And then I'm both... here to learn about uh, patriarchy or something like that." <laughs> Uh, then they go outside the cinema, and there's a hilarious panel where once once the other guy walks away, uh, Axel turns around and goes yep. back in and buys another ticket. Another ticket. Um, I'm very... I want to say another thing is this kind of timing 
Anything to do with timing is very difficult to do in comics. And Carnage just, it's very natural with it to yes. time a gag, which involves going through a certain number of panels. Yes. And you could, it's not like a movie where, you know, it's slapstick and it hits you. It's like the reader's in control of the timing. It like almost doesn't matter. Like he somehow pulls off these amazing gags based around the timing, the That's delivery the of these lines. It's really interesting. Um, okay, so... Now, he needs, he decides he's going to move in with Norbert for a while. He's going to stay with Norbert for a while. He brings over his pet bird, his parakeet or whatever. Yeah, it's some sort of parrot. Yeah. Um, it's which called is, Shvardnads. Yes. Which is the name of a, uh, a Soviet uh, politician of the era who later became the president of Georgia. Right, okay. Yeah. And, and later on, someone mistakes him for Brezhnev, who was the <laughs> Soviet that's right, that's general right. secretary in Kenya. Um, so the bird escapes, and it, it wreaks havoc on the plants, especially around the apartment. Uh, why now, did he decide to move in with Norbert? I, I don't really remember why. I don't remember. I, I was thinking that, too. I don't remember. But there and is the a reason. Because he's homeless. But He wants someone to cook and clean for him. He wants oh, someone to do his laundry. Yeah, that's it. He has this right. ulterior motive. Because Doro's left him. He wants someone to look after him. Yes. Right. And Norbert's yeah. good enough. Norbert, Norbert can do these things. Norbert's yeah. a good cook. He keeps a clean apartment, yes. which he noticed. Yep. You know? Yep. All that stuff when and he was getting cook. in the shower. Yep. Um, so he's in there trying to get a free meal. Yep. Almost literally. Yep. Norbert's in there looking at his butt and fantasizing about pulling his Yeah, Norbert's down. getting something. Yeah, that's it. Norbert's getting something out of this too because he thinks the longer Axel sticks around, the more likely it is that they're going to sleep together. Yes. And he's not mistaken in thinking that because it's pretty heavily hinted that yep. Axel is, cur is curious in yes. that respect. Yes. Yes. Um, so then all the whole gang goes out to a nightclub. This is where uh, Axel asks a random dude where the bathroom is. He asks for a light. And does he ask for a light first, or is that just the film? Anyway, no, he, yes, he does ask for a light. He asks for a light, and then he asks him where the bathroom is. Yeah. And this guy just thinks, great. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> follows him into the toilet. And then yes. essentially... There's no handkerchiefs in this one like in Killer Condom. He just falls him in there. And then he, uh, you know, he starts pulling himself off see, if at it, the urinals. Axel's, but you see, Axel doesn't, as you said, gets defensive again. Yes. He can't handle being propositioned in a urinal. That's right. And he arcs up yeah. and demands that they all leave. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they leave. Dora's definitely pregnant. And now she's planning to marry Axel. Mm -hmm. And her friends are like, what are you talking yeah. about? You remember he's... Then they reveal like he was sleeping with some blonde bimbo or yeah. something, which he's we didn't know about this him. before. We oh. only had Axel's side of the story yeah. up to this point, but he's actually like this kind of terrible he's dude. He's unfaithful. They've been together three years. Yeah. He's um, like a user. He's unfaithful. Yeah. He yeah. Make, she has to do it, you know. And she's pretty shallow too. What? She's just leaping to getting married just because she's pregnant. Yeah. She's and she did try to. There was a scene where she actually tried to sleep with a guy as soon as she'd broken up oh, yeah. with him. Oh yeah. Uh, but that guy was a, a total pig. <laughs> like she couldn't do. It. She couldn't go through with it. She'd only slept with Axel for the last three years, and then yeah. when it came time, she's like, "I can't do it." But this pig reminded her of Axel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she <had to> get <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Funny. Um, okay, so now I think we get to the part. Oh yeah. So Axel needs to go back to his apartment to get some stuff. Yeah. Casablanca's on his favorite movie. Yeah, and he decides he wants Norbert to watch it with him. By the way, this is, and Norbert we learned in Volume Two, which might not have been planned in Volume One, is really into Death in Venice. Right. So they kind of have a connection of like they both like these classic movies kind of yeah. thing. There's kind sure. of an emotional connection there. Sure. Not an emotional, but you know, they they're have common they're, interests. Yeah, common interests. Yeah. And yeah. So and then you know they they sit in bed together to watch it. Yes. Well, first they look, they look at a slideshow. Oh yeah. And there's one like self like selfie a nude selfie that has snuck in there. Snuck in? I don't know. Uh, well, he tries to skip over. He it. does try to skip over it, and then come and Norbert insists on going. Can we go to back to that one? And this is the cover of the comic book. I think yeah. when it was published, yeah, or at least when the American edition was yeah. published, maybe, maybe not. Oh, it is because it's on the German movie poster. The drawing, yes, the Koenig drawing is on the German movie yes. poster. And this is this is quite funny because it, it's meant clearly meant to be really sexy. Yes, but no, 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 it's not sexy. But we're supposed. To, he he looks like he looks ridiculous. Yes, he's hideous. <laughs> yes. He has these huge feet and hands. Yeah. <laughs> his head's off at an angle, and he's got this the dull, stubble. this slack-eyed. This yeah. slack jaw, dull eyed expression, and he's got all this stubble. But, you know, Norbert thinks this is the most <laughs> erotic thing he's ever seen. It's funny because in the film we get this same yeah. slide, and of course it's um, Till Schweiger, who's really an amazingly handsome man. Yeah. 
Yes. Almost too handsome. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. it couldn't be more different yeah. <laughs> than the comic. Anyway, uh, after seeing this, Norbert essentially uh, comes on to yep. Axel. Yep. Crawls so, under the blanket and starts performing yes. oral sex on him. Yes, and then we, we do get that panel that I described earlier where, he, where, he's where Axel's actually a visualizing a woman. Yeah. So it's a, a bit ambiguous, but... You know, but then again, the doorbell rings. Yes, perfect timing. Well, no, the doorbell doesn't ring. In fact, a key turns in the yes, lock. Yes, right. It's Dora. She's letting herself into the flat. Yeah. And uh, Axel's like, oh, shit. Yeah. I'm naked in bed with another man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, if Dora sees me like this, this is going to be a disaster. So he makes Norbert hide in the closet. Yes. <laughs> Just yeah. as if it's like every... You know, with the, with the other woman or what have you, except this time the other woman is a bloke. Yes. And of course it plays out just the way you expect, because Dora comes in, she sees he's acting really awkward, Yeah. and she says, you've got he's, another Yeah, and he's got an erection. Yeah, he's got an erection. <laughs> he's naked with an erection, there's a woman in here, Dora's like, she's in the closet, isn't she? Whips open the closet. I have to say, <laughs> we had a shot of Norbert's face, and then the funniest close-up of a penis I've ever seen in a comic, because yeah. it's it smashed up, you look at, you see, first he opens the door, we see Norbert, like chest up, we see Doro's shocked face, then suddenly we get a close up of the penis, and then we get the next shocked so face, her like, eyes are even bigger. The next three or four panels are of Doro, as you say, Doro's face uh, collapsing, <laughs> becoming more and more ridiculous, sort of collapsing in on itself, yes. and a cloud appearing above it. Yeah. Very funny. <laughs> this is such a memorable image yeah. that it was at this point that I realized I'd read this comic before, unbelievably. At uni, in the public library, I, fl I was flicking through it and I obviously came across this page and thought, whoa, that's full on. And then I put it back and then I forgot about it until wow. this week. <laughs> Holy But moly. that's how memorable that single panel with that close-up of the penis is. Yeah. You don't forget that when you've huh. seen it once. Yeah. So there you go. 20, 25 years ago, I saw it. Wow. That. that is pretty and amazing. I still remember it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so she kind of she freaks out of course but she accidentally reveals that she's pregnant Axel's like oh my god that's amazing that's wonderful Norbert, Norbert shows just, himself out Norbert just he does just show himself out and it's a, bit, it's a bit shit for poor Norbert like yeah. Axel's just kicked him out essentially because he's reunited with Doro yes. he sort of has to get dressed and sidle out yes. a little bit sorry for him yes um Axel shows up at the men's group again. He's got you guys are all fools. Yeah, I've been to a gay club. I hung out with gay dudes. You guys think you know what you're doing? Yeah. What's wrong with the word tits? And then he takes it, off. Yes. And then they just sort of sit there staring at one another. Oh, and he asks the bloke, "When are you going to give that presentation?" Yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he does. A porno movie. Yes. And he, he leaves, and then he gets married. Uh, we well, see Norbert has a dream, much like the dream in Cronenberg's version of The Fly. Uh, in which he's pregnant yeah. with Axel's baby and it comes down and it's the bird. Yeah, except it's, it's the bird Gina that cheats all the time. Gina yeah. Davis giving birth to an enormous maggot. Yeah. It's a guy giving birth to a yeah. bird. <laughs> so, yeah, so two months later, Doro and Axel are getting married and the, uh, like, the trio, so I guess yeah. it's uh, Norbert, Francine, and Waltrina show up. In drag. In drag at the wedding and Doro freaks out. I would say Doro's more homophobic yep. in the comic. Um, yes. Yes. In, in yes. the movie it's more like you're lying to me. Well, she yeah. keeps saying you're she's lying more, to me about your sexuality. She's more that's right. She's more homophobic in the comic because she's She just she's, like those guys, she, you're hanging out with those gays. Like she's all the time she's like, Why are those gays around? Why are you and talking to those gays? She's really worried he's gay too. Yeah. Which is a legitimate concern, and she's and she's <laughs> yes. and this is her big character flaw. She's really homophobic, really yeah. suspicious and intolerant of the idea that there might be a spectrum to, um, to Axel's sexuality. Yeah, and she's worried about AIDS. Yes, topical yeah. at the time, but still comes across as being there is really a really prejudiced. Yeah, there's just actually a funny gag from Axel talking to Norbert, <laughs> where he's like, "I wouldn't have sex." With you or with a homosexual, because I wouldn't want to get AIDS. And, he, and how do you know you don't have AIDS? He says, "Well, I'm I'm a heterosexual." He's like, "Wait a second, what's the, the logic?" It's really because well, he's funny. a fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now we get to volume two, which is uh, what was it called? Pretty baby. Pretty baby. Or maybe, maybe not again. So now it's a few months later. Actually, we know it's got to be like nine months, almost nine months or whatever. Because well, Dora's almost. Dora's pregnant. nine months pregnant, and the baby's due in two weeks. Yeah. So, Norbert is now living with this dude, 
Uh, I can't remember his name. I think he's Heinz in the Heinz. comic. Okay, so he's like, this guy Heinz is a butcher. Now, Norbert's a vegetarian. This guy's a butcher. He likes watching horror movies. Yep. Um, in the movie, it's like first thing in the morning. <laughs> but yeah. here it's like, anyway. So, again, it's like why Norbert, you know, while Trina comes over, why are you with this guy? He likes soccer. This the. Yeah, there's, there's all this there's suspicious a whole funny stuff dialogue about this. where he's like, where they're very, they're very suspicious that whether or not he's actually gay because he he's a butcher. He can't perform like, in the bedroom. Yes, that's right. He's in the Yes, he he's like soccer. They said, "Wait, what gay man likes soccer? Yeah. He works as a butcher." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All yeah. this kind of stuff. Um, and in the film, he dresses hilariously. He dresses like a member of the village people. Yes, he's all in leather. Yeah. He's, yeah. Wearing a, he's wearing leather all the time. Yeah, and a leather hat. And like a chain with a whistle around his neck. Yeah. It's the damnedest thing. Yeah. <laughs> I must admit that they, I really love him in the movie. He's played by this spectacular. I love everybody guy. in the movie. Yeah. Everybody. The casting is really good. Yeah. So actually, now I think it's at this point that um, Norbert reveals he's going to start going to the gym, or was that later on? I think and, it's here. And they're like, "This is crazy. You're going to go to a gym? Yeah. Like, what are you talking about?" Anyway, they go out for a little walk around the neighborhood, and they pass. Axel and Doro. Yeah. And uh, well, Trina makes a joke about how are the three of you if you're pregnant. <laughs> and they don't even say hello to them. Yeah. It's really like real cold shoulder kind yeah. of stuff. Doro's very upset that those those gays made fun of me. Yeah. Uh, made yeah. a joke about me. Why are you still talking to those people? And Axel's like, I'm not talking to them. I haven't spoken to them in months. Oh, incidentally, uh, Heinz the Butcher is watching a film called The Manhattan Meatball Murderer. Yeah. But uh, the comic also mentions another movie of which he's a fan, Return of the Killer Return Condoms. Return of the Killer Condoms. <laughs> which would have come out the ye same year as this? Or, I don't know, he seems to work very fast. These four books came out in a, like a two-year period. Right on. Okay, so they go to the gym. This is hilarious because there's this guy there, this annoying other gay man. I can't remember his name. Uh, but all the other guys are like, this guy is so annoying. He's really, I guess what's the word, vocal. Uh, about he talks about his sexuality like in a loud voice all the time at the at the gym yeah. at the gym there's a hilarious like there's a moment where the the guy the registrar guy says uh, have you guys exercised before and he's like all we ever exercise is our sphincters ha yeah. ha ha yeah. And he cackles it's just really crass he's like really oh, he runs he runs the cackle, cackle for when yes, people cackle, laugh cackle, the word cackle, cackle yeah. yes um, so Norbert tries to get on the exercise, the warm-up bike, he passes the stationary bike for two minutes and passes out. <laughs> and he can't do anything. All these muscle-bound men come up and say, ah, he's lifted too much. And the trainer's like, no, no, he's only been on the bike yeah. for about five minutes. Yeah. So I think his boyfriend, the butch boyfriend, had been in a relationship with this guy or slept with this guy once or something. Because oh, now yeah. they've, they've got crabs going around. Oh, uh, yeah. That's right. So the, the butch is not even faithful. Yes, that's right. So not only is he probably not gay, he's not even faithful. Yeah, I don't think the lack of faith is a problem. Maybe that that particular guy is they they're all really annoyed by this. Well, guy. we know that he's he's not faithful. He, we we know this is true. Like it's not just the guy blowing smoke at Norbit because he says your boyfriend had crabs. Yeah, and I had to get it treated. Yeah, and then later on Norbit gets crabs. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, so Axel comes over to Norbert's house to tell him about the thing that happened to Doro and how offended she was and all yep. this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, when he leaves, he meets this ex-girlfriend from back in his Elke. high school days, yep. Elke Schmidt. She immediately comes on to him hard, like, yep. oh, you gave me my first orgasm, that kind of conversation, like, holy well, shit, he's like... Axel's sexually frustrated because he can't... Oh, that's right. He can't bring himself to make love to Doro while she's pregnant. Yeah. Uh, and Doro, on the other hand, is apparently sex mad yep. at the moment. Yep. Pregnancy has made her libido go up. So there's some tension there. So because Axel's a scumbag, as soon as he sees his ex-girlfriend who's coming onto him, yep. he thinks, great, Doro's going away this weekend. She's going to Bonn. Yep. He thinks, I'm just going to have her come around yep. and I'm going to sleep with her. So he gives her the address. This is pre-cell phone days. And he's like, come over on Saturday yep. to my place. But then he gets home and the reason that Dora was going to go to Bond, has cancelled, like her, she had to meet her friend or whatever, yeah. she's like, so I'm not going away. And it's like, oh, okay, so I gotta find another, I gotta right, get, it's pretty self that's why he doesn't just call her. 
Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't even have her number. No. She's never showing number. up at his house. He's got to like, something. he's like, he's got to wait outside on Saturday and meet her and take her somewhere else. Yeah. He's such a pig. He goes to Norbert's house. Norbert, a gay man. Yeah. Who he blew off. Yeah. Who he, he was just about to sleep with him and he blew off. Yeah. So for Norbert, this is like a real thing. Yeah. For Axel, I don't know. What is it to him? This is just something he, he did. Yeah. A fling. Yeah. Not even a fling. He was going to get his rocks off and then he, Dora showed up and that was and that was that. But for Norbert, Norbert fell for him. Like Norbert mm. was crushing yep. him, right? Yep. So he shows up at Norbert's house. He's like, Norbert, I want to sleep with a woman. I want to sleep with a woman in, <laughs> in your, your house. house. Can your you bed. go out on yeah. Friday, on Saturday yeah. night? Yeah. And Norbert's just like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Are you are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is. Do you know what Walter would do if he, if he found out about <laughs> yeah. this? Yeah. Because there's there's bad blood between Walter, Walter is and Axel because because of that first He's never forgiven him first for that time first night when he bailed party. on him. That's right. And went with Norbert instead. Yeah. So Walter can't stand yeah. Axel. But, but he agrees. Yeah. He does t he gets talked into it finally. Maybe because he's still crushing on him. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Doro's friend especially is like, this is very suspicious. Suddenly, because he comes home and he says, oh, I actually have a, a high school reunion I have to go to <laughs> yeah. this weekend or something. So he comes up to his case and the friend is like, no, he's up to something. Yep. I loved when this happened because immediately I was like, oh, here we are. Some sitcom hijinks are going to happen yeah. at that apartment because he's going to be at that apartment yep. with that girl. Yep. And of course, that's exactly what happens. <laughs> So he goes there. So the friends, uh, the uh, so Norbert Butcher, <laughs> and hilariously in the film his name is actually Butcher. So <laughs> his name in the film is Metzger, which okay. is which is which means butcher. Excellent. And it's also a surname. <laughs> yes. <sir. laughs> uh, so they go to see Death in Venice at the cinema. Um, it turns out to be a disaster. Oh, by the way, there's a sp this is subplot about this ad that's going around for something called a manslip, these men's oh, underwear, that yeah. the gay men just can't stop talking about. They're like, have you seen that ad, no that YouTube. commercial? So if they want no. to see the commercial they have to go with to the, the half nude men, they have to go to the cinema. They have to go to the to cinema to see this ad. <laughs> just to see the ad. <laughs> um, but they go into the cinema. It's in a tiny cinema because there's a new rock uh, Rambo movie playing, yep. like Rambo 12 yep. or something yep. is playing. At the big one, so like, well, we'll go in the small one. But then there's some guys, some drunk guys, young dudes who yep. have wandered in the wrong cinema. Go in there. It's They're menace. making so much um, yep. noise and stuff. It ends up in a big fist fight because Butcher actually punch starts throwing some punches as yep. well, etc. And they have to leave before the movie's over. But well, Trina has a bloody nose. Yeah. And he's like, well, we have to go back to Norbert. We have to go back to your apartment so I can yep. clean up. So, uh oh, this is bad. This is some hijinks. Yeah. This is yeah. some Three's yeah. Company hijinks. Yes, exactly. I was like, I'm here for it. Yeah. Meanwhile, Bring it on. Uh, Axel is hooking up with Elka and she wants oh. him to try <laughs> this drug. Yeah, because she's been living in the States and she's brought this stuff back from Texas. She's brought a called... Texan aphrodisiac for yeah. cattle. Yeah, it's called Bull Power. Called Bull Power. Yeah. And she's, she says, you know, just one sniff of this and, and you become a rutting animal. Yeah. And he's he's not super keen on the idea because no. he knows in two hours he's got to be out of the flat. But she talks him into it. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's a terrible idea because oh, uh, yeah. he starts hallucinating. Yeah, some amazing drawings here yeah, from Koenig so of, like, melting faces and, like, distortion. Like, it's a really pretty wild sequence. Yeah. Uh, this drug scene. Yeah. Um, so the guys come home... And they find, we, first we get a panel we don't understand. It looks like a monkey sitting on a hill looking at the moon. <laughs> it's like 2001. It's like 2001. You're like, what are we looking at? And then we see a monkey and we're like, I'm still like, what are we looking at? They come in and it's actually Axel sitting in the nude on his coffee table. Yeah. Axel's having an episode. Yeah. He, he's become catatonic. Yeah. He thinks he's an ape. Yeah. A prehistoric ape. Yeah. And he's sitting on the coffee table in the nude, spaced out. Yeah. Meanwhile... Elka has, incidentally, Elka has decided he's gay. Right, that's right. She's found magazines in, when she's gone to the toilet. Yeah, in, quote, his bathroom. Quote, because unquote, his bathroom. Because Axel's told her this is his house. Yeah. She's found magazines, presumably pornographic, male pornographic magazines. Yeah. Uh, and she's, oh, that's weird. And then, of course, when he takes the bull power, he's not able to sexually perform because he's wigging out. Mm. He's having a bad trip. And she says, oh, what? Okay, so you're gay. Yeah. You're gay. And she goes and takes a bath. Yeah. While Norbert, while Trina and, and co are uh, tr trying to snap <laughs> Axel out of it, uh, Heinz the butcher says, well, I'm going to go to the toilet. <laughs> and he sees Elka there in the bath having a he bubble He sees Elka bath. in the bath and she says, are you gay as well? Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
Okay, that's where that scene ends. <laughs> yep. Dora shows up. Yeah, she's figured out where Norbert. She's figured. She, she knows, called. He wrote down the number. Yeah. He wrote down Norbert's number. Yeah. She called, expecting to hear A his voice. his female partner that he's cheating yeah. on her with. Of course, Norbert answers the phone. Hello, Norbert, and it's confirmed all her most yes. her worst fears. Yeah, because she's so terrified. Axel's gay. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, now here's the proof. He's going for a rendezvous with Norbert. Yeah. She shows up. Of course, he's... Squ- She's like, I want a divorce. He's squatting. He's yes. squatting naked on the coffee yeah. table. She goes into labor. Yeah. Axel still can't be woken up. Norbert takes her to the hospital. Yes. So Norbert goes into the delivery room with her. Yeah. Because they think he's the father. And it's yeah. all very it's all very sitcom hijinks. Yeah. It's very and then And then once Axel snaps out of it, it's Waltrina that drives him... To yeah. the hospital. Yes. They have a bit of a conversation about oh, us versus Meanwhile, Spencer. Norbert's gone into the bathroom and found the butcher. I think it was... Or was it Waltrina? It was Waltrina that found out, because he relates that to her later. Oh, in the okay. movie, it is... Oh, you're right. It is yes, you're Waltrina. Right. So it's Waltrina that, that finds out. out. Of course, of course, yeah. the butcher is sleeping with Elka. In Having sex with in the bathtub, yeah. Well, there wasn't much sleeping going on. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Terrible. So when they get to the hospital, the baby has already been born. Norbert had to witness it, and he's like freaked <laughs> he's out. Horrified. By, absolutely horrified. Because he's a gay man, so he doesn't want to see uh, it. As soon as Doro sees Axel, she freaks out. She says, get out. She says, fuck you, get out of my sight. I never want to see you again. Yep. But then the nurse brings in the baby, and then they have a total hetero normative. Oh, normative I love you. you. Uh, let's be together forever with our wonderful, beautiful baby yep. that's been born. And the lads go off to they're like i don't understand heteros let's go to a nightclub you yeah. go to a gay club and that's how it ends with um doro and axel kind of happily heteronormative ever after well they're probably not ha- we get a we that get a kind true. of refrain yeah uh that one of those aforementioned poems that's been translated yeah. or song lyrics that's been translated cleverly into english with rhymes implying that they're miserable yes well really. of, of course because they're not really a good match. No, for that's one true. Another. Because it's, we're kind of in the perspective of, well, how can the hetero life, how can these people be happy in any way? The system that they've got. No, I mean, Axel and Dora are plainly miserable with each other. Yeah. And they've only together because they think they should be and because they've had this baby. Yeah. And they, they also, they're also hi- hypocrites because they, I think at one point Axel actually chastises Norbert, tells him he's jealous of, mm. je- jealous of the kind of lifestyle that Axel gets to lead, mm-hmm. the normal quote unquote right, lifestyle. Normal life. yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. this is while he's actively cheating on his yes. pregnant yes. wife. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. It's very funny. So there's a lot of skewering of the ridiculousness of relationships from yeah. both, both, it's probably harder on the hetero people than it is on the gay people but the gay people aren't spared they're made to look equally yes. ridiculous yes. or almost equally ridiculous yes. in these um in these caricatures yeah. yeah so it's it's all very funny i yeah. found myself laughing a lot reading this yeah comic. me too absolutely yeah uh okay so let's talk about this movie from 1994 yes so uh, before killer condom yes so the director is sonke vortman sonke vortman yes I don't really know. I also wrote, co-wrote the film. Okay. Uh, Koenig is credited as a writer. Yeah. I wonder if that's a convention. I'm not sure if he worked on the script or not, or if it's just because he contributed the material oh, okay. on which the script is based. I don't know. But we did get a, co- a credit that said Knocked In Comics, based on the comics, yep. um, you know, by... And it lists the two comics that it's based on. So, this film already... We start with this film. Already there's a difference, mm. a big difference. There's no suicide. No. Attempt. There's no suicide attempt. Yes. This, I think, is a sign that we're going to get a softer version of Axel. Yes. That was my conclusion. As soon as I saw that, I thought, ah. Yes. We are supposed to like Axel in this Well... And I think it was born... I'm not sure, because instead, we get this... You get opening ballroom dancing scenes. It's very traditional. Oh, it's amazing. Like 1930s, well... Male, female... Ballroom dancing. This is this set, actually it, plays very well in contrast to the bar scenes and the party yeah. scenes we get later on in the movie. It's, so Axel and Doro both work in a they're like in, caterers. A ninety yeah they yeah they they wait staff. Oh no they're staff they're wait staff wait right. staff yeah they work in a nineteen twenties nineteen thirties themed club restaurant yeah uh, apparently that was very cool in nineties Germany. Oh uh, right uh, there was a much middle... like the swing scene yeah. in nineties LA okay. <laughs> 
I feel like there was a film based. Yeah, well, there certainly was. <laughs> what was that? Swingers, I yep. believe it was. Yep. A little backpack. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yes. So, and the uh, the man who's singing at the start, he's called Max Rab. Yep. Apparently, very much associated with this revival okay. of the nineteen twenty, kind of like Weimar mm. music. So, jazz, big band music mm. from the nineteen twenties and thirties. Uh, his that orchestra that's playing in that first scene is his orchestra. Right. Okay. okay. I did notice that in the credits. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize it was actually him. It's called the yeah. Palast Orchestra. Yeah. Yeah. Which specializes in kind of like those big band music. And he, right. he Max Raab, the guy singing, he composed the soundtrack. So you notice him oh, singing a lot during the okay, got during it. the film. Yeah. Okay. But uh, as you say, uh, our introduction to the characters is. Well, we don't know. So we see this super handsome waiter. Yep. Looks at one of the girls is out there dancing on the floor with some old guy. Yep. And in the next scene, we're in the bathroom. Yep. And there's a waitress in there who's hiding in one of the cubicles. And she hears two people having sex in the next booth. Yep. And she looks over and she's like, haha. She's like, haha, funny. No, no, no. no. There's First she's amused. Sex. Yeah, but she's then, amused. But then someone drops their keys. Yes. Oh, that's right. And she looks down and she recognizes the key yeah. ring clearly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we see her do a double take. Yes. It's a, The key ring is a camera. Yeah. Because in this film, Axel is a kind of sensitive photographer type. Yes. Or a frustrated... Amateur, yeah. A frustrated amateur mm. photographer. Uh, and she recognizes it. She looks over. She already knows what she's going to see. It's Axel... Having sex with having one sex of the customers. With this, yeah. yeah, with one of the customers. And she says, how are you going to explain this, Axel? Yeah. And he's like, Doro, I can explain. This isn't what it looks like. <laughs> Why do guys always say that? He was literally still in the middle of coitus. Yeah. <laughs> it's, this isn't what it looks yeah. like. And she says, I want you out of my apartment. This is the last time, she says... I want you out of my apartment in the morning. Yes. So now, so Axel hasn't cheated. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Axel hasn't tried to commit suicide the way he did in the yep. comic with his fake suicide attempt. And now he's homeless. Yes. So, and now we, he's, he's a complete slut. We see him going around to all of his old girlfriends. Yes. All of whom throw stuff at him and tell him to get lost. Yeah. And he, he literally has nowhere to sleep. Yeah. I, I think he has to crash at the men's group or does he just uh, leave his stuff there? I don't remember i think he just left his stuff there so i already i was this i was disappointed to see this because we're we're getting a softer view of axel he's first of all he hasn't done his stupid suicide his abusive mm. kind of like attention seeking suicide fake suicide attempt he's just been unfaithful which is also a scumbag move but because we haven't got any context who knows why he's being unfaithful yeah I wonder... and then he's thrown out and he's homeless so yeah. i think we're meant to sympathize with him and it doesn't hurt that he's, right. he's really good looking. I did think that, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but I do think that cheating is supposed to be seen as a scumbag movie. It's absolutely a hard, it's absolutely a, you know, beyond the pale as far as I'm concerned. But I think it's less, it, it, it's less horrible than the suicide attempt. Because yeah. when we discovered that he faked a suicide attempt for attention. That's true. With, uh, that is really gross and manipulative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where, where uh, people are often unfaithful, yeah, and and I guess they can still be normal members of society, whereas people that fake suicide attempts <laughs> to manipulate their spouses, that's pretty dirty yeah. behaviour. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now we get the scene with Norbert. Plays it the same way, same gags. Where he wakes up to the radio, and it's the same stuff on the. There are gags on the radio about yeah, auto about being song. auto bomb being mixed up with atom bomb. With atom bomb. Oh, in the um in the comic, it was Hamas that did the bombing. Oh, was it? Yeah, Hamas with remember. two S's. Remember that. Whereas okay. in the uh, in the film, it was something else. Okay. I didn't know Hamas was around, but in the eighties, there you go. Um, but Norma wakes up and is finds that his stuff is missing, like his TV and yeah. his record player. And then when Walt Trout comes in. He's, Walt Trout, yeah. Yeah, he's like, um, oh, it's that punker stole Walt your Trout. stuff. So that was the thing that was given in dialogue yeah. in the comic, but here we get a, a visual, visual representation. That's good. Of, yep. Yep. So. Walt Trout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they go to the gym. So we get the gym scene here. The gym. So they put it earlier, and they did something similar with Killer Condom, where they took stuff from volume two and front loaded it into the start. Because you have two, I kind of two separate narratives, essentially. Yeah. So how do you tell a singular story yeah. when you have two separate books with beginnings, middles, and ends? But I, you shuffle some yeah. of the stuff. Yeah. So he goes to the gym. I will say that it plays almost identical, except that instead of having that 
guy Frank Hillsman, who was the over the top guy in that. They now we've got with Walter. Walt, we've got Walter. So Walter he's not pretty... he's not quite ex as extreme as he gets Frank some of Hillsman. the same lines. He gets the same lines, but the white players. No, they've just merged the two characters. Yeah. Again, good choice. You don't need that extra character. Yeah. Wal Walter, Waltrina, Vol But Walt Frank Powell. is a funnier character for being more extreme. I, I suppose. Think. Yeah. But it, it seems like a good choice. Yeah. You can't have too many... You can't introduce a new character. Uh, and yeah. Vol Walter was already pretty camp, so yeah. it, it's fine. So we do have the men's group here. It's pretty much the same stuff. Pretty much all the same. Same dialogue. Everything's exactly the same. They're talking about all the same stuff. Uh, Axel comes in and he's Walter... Homeless. This time he's homeless. He, he's, he wants someone to leave his suitcase. Yes. And Walter sees him and is like, holy cow. Um, and they go into the kitchen for the sandwich. Same kind of thing. He doesn't quite invite him to the party. No, he doesn't invite him to the party this time. Yeah. This is another important difference. This time, Walter says, you can come stay at my house. Yeah. You need somewhere to stay. Because he's just asked if he yeah. can stay at the men's group house. And the men's group guy's like, you can't because my sister's coming tomorrow. Right, or that's like right, that. that's right. And he's like, can I leave a case here? He says, yeah, you can leave a case here. So, and then Walter's like, oh yeah, here's my chance. Mm. He's in the kitchen says, come stay with me. Yeah. And Axel, instead of saying, you know, fuck no, <laughs> I don't know you from Adam. Yeah. Uh, Axel's just like, oh, well, I don't know. And Walter's like, okay, here's my number. Yeah. You know, just call me if you change your mind. Mm. Okay, fine. So Axel still can't find a place to stay. Yes, and he's still working with Doro at the bar, the restaurant. So yeah. he quits that job. Yes. We learn. Um, and then he phones... And uh, Doro, Doro, who's also been softened a bit in this version, gives him a sandwich to eat. Yes, when, half a sandwich. When he quits, half a sandwich. Yeah. She eats half a sandwich. She says, you look hungry. She says, you look like a mess. Here's a sandwich. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. We're getting kinder versions of the characters. Yes. Now, this might be what you referred to last week. We'll see. Yeah. We'll talk about it a bit more at the end. But last week, you mentioned that uh, horror queers thought that in comparison to the comic that this film was quote unquote straight washed yeah. and I I don't know this might be the beginnings of that mm. here in the first few scenes because certainly they're less antagonistic and loathsome than they are in the comic yeah now this might just be the film writer saying you know I don't have confidence in the material unless people like the main characters <laughs> I don't... A lot of, you know... Or yeah, I don't know. I actually think this movie's pretty close to the comic for the most part, except for the things you've talked about. I mean, all the the, the characters, the dialogue, the situations, all yeah. those things, it's, they've got a very solid foundation in the comic. Absolutely. But I, as we've said before it, in this podcast, when adaptations hew closely to the source material, when it deviates from it, becomes more obvious. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. Yeah, we'll okay. see. Okay. So, again, the our gay men are getting ready for this party. Yep. There's a phone call for Walter. Plays out exactly. really funny in the movie. This is very movie. funny, yeah. It really works very well, because he actually runs across he does the, the down the hall. He, he minces across the hall. Yes. So, first of all, he answers it in his camp, you know, his camp uh, drag voice, I suppose. Yeah. And uh, can I speak to Walter? And he does this... <laughs> The actor is really good. The guy that plays Walter is amazing. As I've already said, the spitting image of the comic. Yes. <laughs> but he's also really funny. Yeah. Like a very talented actor. Yeah. Uh, he sort of does this double take. And then, you know, again, I'll just get him. And then he... he we, we see it from Norbert and Francine's perspective. We see him mince away from the phone yeah. with feminine footsteps. Calls for Walter. Then he thuds yes. back yes. across with masculine tread. Yeah. <laughs> and picks up the phone and says... Hello, Walter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it plays it's really very well. funny. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. So this time, it's Axel asking if he can stay. Yes. Uh, and Walter says, "Okay, uh, yeah, you can, but I'm about to go to a party. Yeah. We might not be back till late. Why don't you just come? Yeah. We'll pick you up from the train station. So then, again, he just goes back. He starts immediately starts stripping off all his makeup and mm. stuff because he because Axel's not going to go for him if he looks if he's all weirded up in drag. Yeah. Uh, and that's where we get the line, her, her name is Walter and she's in love. Yes. yes. <laughs> so they go pick him up. Uh, he's looking very miserable out in front of the train station. Yes. He's a little bit freaked out by these two guys well, in drag well, he in gets in. as well. He gets in. Yeah. He says, hello, Walter. Hello, girls. Yeah. And they go, hello. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then he, he does a yeah. double take. Now, we get to this party. I have to say... So he's much more freaked out, isn't yes. he? Yes. Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. 
He's more like deadpan in the... He's like, he doesn't care that they're... Yeah. He's kind of like, yeah. why are you dressed up? And they're like, oh, it's because it's funny. He's like, okay, whatever. I'm yeah. going to have a drink. He, he's a bit more weirded out. Yeah. 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 And I think this is part of... he. He's... I think... Axel in this film is a bit more is a bit uh, is unambiguously straight. I think. Oh well, except for the yeah. Okay, uh, we'll carry on. Okay. Well, this is an early sign that perhaps we have a different characterization of his sexuality than the. Comics. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. So he's just sort of watching, a bit freaked out by what he's seeing. There's all these blokes in drag. The host of the party is amazing, like a balding guy. Yeah. In a form-fitting kind of like dress. Yeah. Wearing glasses and I, lipstick. I want to say that the visualization of the party is was really interesting to me. Like last week when you were talking about how the movie was more palatable than the comic because the comic was so extreme. Yeah. I kind of got that this week from certain things like this party because it is so colorful and mm. like fun. And it's not like the costumes are wild and like awesome. Yeah. And it's not like the, the comic is everything's kind of on that same Koenig level. I'm not yeah. saying he's a bad cartoonist or anything like that. He just draws things in a grotesque kind of way yeah. on purpose. Yeah. And even the party is kind of a grotesquerie. Whereas yeah. here, it's like really, everything's really fabulous. Yeah. Um, so... Well, the, um, we have this great... Well, because we don't get Large Marge yes. this time. We get Monty... Monty Arnold or something? Something yeah. like that. Monty Arnold and his gorilla. This is fantastic. Yeah. He sings... He comes out, he's got his pianist. The pianist, again, doesn't seem thrilled to be there, yeah. but whatever. <laughs> and he sings this amazing song, My Gorilla Has a Villa in the Zoo, which is a real song from 1920s Germany. Right. And but again, it's a it's a, like a buff guy wearing a gorilla mask, much like the Neanderthal. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's so funny. This it plays guy. out the same way. Yeah, it does. Yeah. They've got a bodybuilder. Yeah. He's wearing a gorilla mask. Yeah. And he's just posing while this guy sings this Mine Gorilla Het in Villa in Zoo I actually googled the song There's a video of Max Grab singing it Okay uh, I'll put it on the Facebook page Okay, okay cool <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that plays are all the same. Meanwhile, Doro's on her date that goes horribly wrong with this pig. Yeah, with the pig. That yeah. She's like, I don't want to have sex with you, and he starts yelling insults and stuff at her, etc. At the Meanwhile, back at the party, oh. it plays out... Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, okay. at the party. Did you notice who was at the party? Who is the chest hair person asking Axel about his chest hair? Oh, who was it? It's Babette. I'm... Right. I'm willing... I will, I will stake my career on the fact... It's the same actor that plays Bob slash Babette in Killer Condor. Wow, okay. Two years earlier. Yeah, right. Okay. I'm sure of it. Yes. It makes sense now that you say it. <laughs> it's just that hardly in this, where yeah. of course a major character yeah. in Killer Condor. Yeah. But here, just in this funny scene where she keeps asking him, where he keeps asking Axel about his chest hair. Yeah. I want to touch your chest yeah. hair. Do you <laughs> have chest hair? If you want to show me, well, I want to show you my chest hair. Yeah. It's just because they're both supposed to be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it plays it the same where basically Axel has figured out that Walter wants to take him, wants to sleep with him. Yeah. He's like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay with Norbert. Norbert's a stand-up guy. Yeah. I'm going to go with him. Yeah. And uh, and Walter, again, absolutely pissed off and outraged by this. Yeah. Uh, so Axel goes home with Norbert. We get the same... The scene is the same with a couple of key differences. Yeah. Here, um, again, Axel shows his tattoo to yes. Norbert. And Norbert is, you know, practically... He looks like he's about to pass out because <laughs> yeah. he's so attracted to Axel. Yet, we hear nothing about how he got the tattoo this time. That's right. So, no hint of it being in exchange for sexual favours, yeah. like it was in the comic. Yeah. And again, we we don't get the scene of the of coitus interruptus. That's right. That's right. There's no interrupted sex like there was in the comic yeah. where the doorbell... This time, the doorbell just rings. Yeah. And Norbert goes up and he's like, what the hell do you want? Yes. <laughs> so, he's still angry, but why... This time there was nothing was interrupted. Well, so again we're not. There's, there is a moment where it's in both the comic and the movie. Yeah. At the party, Norbert confronts Walter and yep. says, "What are you gonna sleep with him when he's drunk?" Yeah. But then after Walter Axel says, the exact says same thing. "I'm gonna go home with Norbert, yep. not you." Walter throws the exact same line back into Norbert. What are you gonna face. sleep with him when he's drunk? Yeah. yeah. So. He, so Norbert wants. It has to been sleep established that Norbert is hoping something being hypocritical yeah. and is hoping something. Of course, of course. Yeah. 
But here, nothing is happening. No, that's right. We just right. have a drunk guy. So, I, I guess... So, uh, this would be, I, I yeah, suppose, so maybe an example it's of straight washed, but also is. it's gag-washed, because the gag of the doorbell ringing and interrupting is also kind of removed from yeah. it. But it's interesting that, that we have no, this time we have no ambiguity about Axel's sexuality. He's just a sort Not of... Not at this stage. He's just sort of naive person experiencing this yes world. oh yeah that's i guess yeah yeah i suppose being experienced and coming yeah back well where he'd been world. in the army and had had yeah sexual encounters in the yeah. army yeah. yeah yeah well yeah okay so they wake up in the morning by the way there's a great visual gag where he's when they look at axel passed it on the couch he still got his pants down from showing off his tattoo <laughs> and it, that was a moment that actually really i was like because the comic has, there's something so naturalistic about it. It's just like, it lends itself very easily to just being put on film like that. And it's like, they just put it there and he's lying there with his pants and it just works so well, I thought. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the next day he goes out, here he leaves. Oh, we get the shower scene again, yeah. uh, where he strips down and Norbert's kind of freaking out about this. Um, he goes to the sex shop. Now, we it's a bit of the adult. It's an adult cinema, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It says sex shop it's on a, the sign, yeah, but cinema. essentially it's an adult cinema. But in the comic, he had been kind of outraged by being accused of wanting to have sex with Norbert, or you know, like almost having sex with him, or the experience he had in the army. Yeah, like, so I never he has to overcompensate by going. He has to, to kind of overcompensate. Cinema. This time, he's just seemed to doing it because he's aggressively straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's it plays out funny. a little bit. Yeah, but he it plays out almost the same because yeah. he meets the guy. It's all this stuff is very close to the comic. Yep. All the dialogue, everything's very close. He meets the guy think, from the men's group. I mean, I read a review where it said that, as I said earlier, that that a lot of the dialogue was just lifted right. from the comic. Right. So he meets the guy from the men's group. They both make their excuses for why they're there. He turns around and goes back inside after that guy's gone away, etc. Yep. Um, he moves in with Norbert. He brings his bird. The bird tears up the place, which actually looks great on film because I don't think that's the kind of thing that Gurning's yeah. good at drawing at is like an overhead shot of all the leaves on the ground yeah. or whatever. He he draws it he does Some, a cart he has his cartoony version of it, but it looks really good the way they've Some, decided the, to the film. The parrot it. in order to escape from its cage plays dead. Yes. That quite, was a bit over the top. It was a bit weird. Hard well, to, in the, hard in to the buy. comic it's because the the bottom of the cage is not fast and so it falls off. Yeah. But maybe they thought that would I don't understand why they didn't just do that. Why not just show the cage, the bottom of the cage falling off? Seems like an easy thing yeah, to show. Yeah, it's a very elaborate cage compared to the one in the Maybe that's comic. why. I don't know. Because you couldn't sport it from the bottom because it was so big. Yeah, I don't know. It was very much... It's, it was like playing dead like... Um, like like the Norwegian. Python. Yeah, like, yeah the... like the Norwegian blue. <laughs> like... I just thought, what's... Just, it, it, there's, a, there's a thud, too, as it hits the bottom <laughs> of the cage. Yes. Yeah. He does this great trick where he pretends to be dead in order to escape, and then of course it immediately yeah. escapes. They go to the nightclub, similar scene where he approaches a guy for a light and then says, where's the toilet? And the guy comes in, he's outraged, um, yeah. and they leave. But as he's living with Norbert, we get this, there's a scene that's not from the comics, <laughs> yep. um, where Norbert has a problem where his newspaper is getting stolen every day. Yes. So they gang up to confront the guy... Who's stealing the newspaper? Because Norbert is a big pushover. Yeah. You see, uh, and here you see. I think again. I think this is done to humanize our main character. Well, not humanize. He was obviously I think it's already there to make a connection between the two. Okay, of that's them. fair too, and that's that's plausible. But I also felt like this was done to make again to to make to make there some more, as you say. There's a connection, but there's also reciprocity, because Axel is taking advantage of Norbert. Yes. He's staying with him. He's letting Norbert cook for him. And then later on, he gets him to drive him around to all the different places so he can collect all his luggage mm. and all this stuff. And But in the film, unlike in the comic, we get a scene where Norbert teaches Axel to cook uh, so that Axel kind of cooks for mm. Norbert. And then also we have this scene where Axel teaches Norbert to stand up for himself. Yeah. As you say, this is to, this establishes more of a connection between the two of them. Yeah, it's like of, a buddy cop yeah. kind of thing. You know, you'd get a scene like that in a buddy cop movie where... I'm just thinking of like even a few months ago I rewatched Rush Hour. I watched that on the plane. <laughs> and it's like where you know where, oh, yeah, where he teaches what... Jackie Chan how to dance or something yeah. like that. Like there's that kind of scene. Oh my so god. So I think yeah. that's what this is. Yes, here. that's fair. That's fair. You know, I think yeah, I think that's a big part of it. 
but it also feels like making our main character a bit more likable. A bit more likable than he was in the comic, where he was pretty reprehensible. Yeah. So, we get the moment with the slideshow. I don't remember yeah. why they went back to his apartment. I think it was... I think they're getting his stuff. Yeah, I think that must be it. And they just decide to watch a slideshow. Let's There's watch no the Casablanca this time. There's no Casablanca. We do get the... The selfie, the nude selfie. Where so he was testing his timer. camera's timer. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, it's this guy, Til, Sh Til, Sh Til Schwieger. He, he looks... He's really fit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's nothing like the poster. No. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. False and advertising. Of course, here, Norbert... So, again, we... So, Norbert kisses Axel on the shoulder. We, at, we cut away. And yeah, it goes to black, but we hear... We like, hit. oh, Norbert kind of like, it's happening. I'm not sure to me. I, I think it's on. Yes. I think they are back. It, okay, it does happen. It does happen. He says something. They're like, both like moaning in pleasure. Like He says something like, oh no, Norbert. Mm -hmm. like, like he's... Huh. But again, he's clearly into it. Yeah. Because when the door opens, Norbert is under the blanket like he is in the Yeah, comic. and he's completely naked. Yeah, and he has to hide well, Norbert, naked. Norbert's naked because he said he's hot. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> right, okay, gotcha. So, they're watching the slides, and uh, Axel is in a singlet. Incidentally, the, the guy that plays Axel, Till Schweigas, had a long career in cinema and in television. He's been in a lot... He's in Inglorious Bastards. Mm -hmm. uh, he's in Atomic Blonde. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, we're going to see him again. Right, okay. But in this film, honestly, he's really just... He's very vacuous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure about his performance in this. He's really just a pretty boy mm. going through the motions. I don't really think much of his performance. Hmm. So here he's just sort of sitting on the ca on the bed, looking gorgeous. Meanwhile, uh, Norbert, who's played by Joachim Kroll, is brilliant. Yeah. I absolutely. Oh, yeah. he's great. He's really loves great his too, performance. Yeah. Uh, he also appeared in the film, the German film Run Lola Run. Have you ever seen yeah, that? Yeah. It's very good. Uh, where his character was also called Norbert. Huh. Bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's fantastic. Anyway, so he, as I said, he, he kisses Axel on the shoulder. We fade to black or cut away. We hear Axel say something like, Oh no, oh no, Norbert. Mm. He, he's not telling him to get off. He's not saying, No, Norbert. But mm. maybe mm. it's kind of playful. or. Mm. But anyway, it doesn't matter because Doro's coming in. Yeah. We see uh, Norbert gets out from under the blanket where he is. Yep. And it plays out much like it did in the comic. He yeah. hides in the cupboard. Yeah. Uh, we don't get the hilarious close-up, but when no. he does come out oh, naked, it's no pretty nudity, funny. Except for two, except for some some, some, some men's male, butts. Men's butts. Yeah. It is quite funny when he wa he's walking around naked in the apartment trying to get his clothes back on. Like that's kind of the substitute um, for the close-up. Yeah. Yes, and it is funny, but it's also a bit pitiful because they embrace again, and. Axel's just, again, is, is already forgotten Norbert exists. Yeah, so Norbert says, can we still hang out as friends or something? But didn't he, didn't that come later in the comic? Like Maybe. I can't remember, but, but anyway. It's, it's, it's a bit sad. Yeah. He, he's naked and getting dressed, while meanwhile Axel and uh, Doro are embracing and, as you say, falling into their heteronormative roles. Yes. And uh, poor old Norbert is literally putting his pants on. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. And being um, kicked out. Yeah, and then he has the dream about having the baby he bird. Does. That that has actually filmed in this weird psychedelic sequence in here. Yeah. Um, so then we get a cut, but I guess we don't get a title card that says seven months later or anything like that. But it is seven months later. It is. For some reason they waited seven months to get married, because yeah. now she's massively pregnant yeah. at the wedding. And she's two weeks away from Why her not just have away? that scene first? Yeah. And then go to seven months later. Who would wait seven months only to get married at nine months pregnant? Weird. Yeah. Anyway, they show up at the wedding again. <laughs> well, Voltaire well, is a great... Thing, I think that's after we've been introduced to the butcher boyfriend. Yes. The horror movie You're scene. Because right. I think he <laughs> gets up Manhattan that morning. People. Yes. And the guys watching horror movies at 9 a.m. They get ready and then they get in the car and they go to the You're wedding. Right. Yeah. With the Manhattan meatball murders. Yes. Very funny. Yeah. <laughs> the guy that plays Metzger, the butcher... <laughs> He's hilarious. As you said, well cast. Everyone's well cast in this movie. Uh, they show up at the wedding. Voltaire has this really funny line where he says, you know, I shaved my moustache for you. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Interestingly, uh, 
Unlike in the comic, Norbert is not in drag in this scene. Right. And I think that's done to make Norbert a bit more likeable too, because mm. he, in the comic, he was in drag and he was into spoiling yeah. uh, Axel's wedding, but here it was sprung on him by Walter. Yeah. Mm. So I think Norbert confronts him in a grocery store instead of coming to his apartment. Yeah. Actually, it's Axel that confronts oh, sorry, him. That's right, I meant Axel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Axel, Axel confronts Norbert in the grocery store. Instead of the scene where he gets the cold shoulder at nighttime, it's for crashing the wedding, which I guess is a good way to tie them together. Yeah. Uh, but also, he wants something. So we feel like Axel doesn't really have any maids because he doesn't have anyone to talk about his problems with yeah. except for Norbert. Yeah. Well, we already know that he doesn't want anything to do with the men's group because we had a similar scene in the film to the one in the comic. He shows up to get his suitcase and says, you guys are all a bunch of wankers. Yes, that's right. I'm getting married and having kids. So long, losers. So he doesn't have anyone to talk to except Norbert. So he... First off, he starts off by saying, you really upset Doro, and you're making life hard for me. Then he just wants to talk about his problems. Yes. Just yeah. he can't have sex with Doro. I can't Doro have sex with Doro. pregnant. Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You've got to help me out. And and Norbert says something like, oh, I can't imagine what advice you expect from a gay man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for dealing with your yeah. marital problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Axel leaves, of course, without paying. So Norbert has to pay the bill. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then he bumps into Elke Schmidt, um, his ex-high school or university girlfriend. Yeah. She, again, uh, talks about what a, what, a, what a spunk he is, how much, yeah, how and much there's, he slayed I mean, when she's, he was a younger she's man. She's also a smoke show. Yeah. Um, it's really, again, it's like the colorfulness of the party. Somehow, these people walking out of the comic into the real world, it's like... It's like one of those fantasy scenes in, like, Cool World or something, where something, suddenly the cartoons become real. Wow, are we going to do um, Cool World one day? No. Uh, <laughs> oh, I guess it is about a cartoonist, so it's on the cheat list. It's so on the cheat list. Episode 575, uh, write that one Stay down. tuned, everyone. Episode 575, Cool um, World. Cool World. Yeah, it's, that kind of, it's like that, like, he's... Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, Doro, too. I mean, they're a very attractive couple together. It's You can kind of buy it more than in the comic, where it's, like, some weird... That weird hetero world, well, it's, I guess all the gay guys look like total freaks, too, especially Walter. Well, yeah, um, that's... Uh, everybody looks like a freak in the comic, but in this movie, the heteros especially are really good-looking. Amazingly good-looking. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but we, interestingly, I mean... Well, did you notice that when Dora's upset, she listens to metal? I did notice that at the wedding. She listens to thrash metal to calm down, I guess. Is it to calm down, or is it... I, I don't think it's to calm down... I think, I, think this is an, I think this is an auditory equivalent of her mental state, right? Yeah. So she's, yeah, yeah. she's angry and upset, yeah. so we're listening to angry and upset music, thrash. Yes, right, okay. I did not I did notice that. Did I you recognise the music? It sounded familiar, but... Is it Udo Dirk Schneider or someone like no, that? No, it's definitely... I don't... <laughs> no, it was definitely not. I did try to, uh, like, use my Google Kazam and... It, oh, my it God! I, I, I knew you... I thought you'd have an inkling. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that you didn't like know. It was like... I kind of it sounded familiar, but I couldn't quite place it. Uh, and it wasn't listed on the soundtrack, right. which I looked up. Right. Including at the end credits of the movie, it was not listed. That's annoying. Yeah, very annoying. I will. Uh, so he meets Alki, okay, and uh, what I was about to say was that they, we don't get thought balloons. Of course we don't get thought balloons. Uh, there are some movies where we will get thought balloons, but not in this, not one. this one. So we don't get his excitement about, I'm going to fuck Elke Schmidt, I'm going to fuck Elke Schmidt, as he does in the comic. Mm. Um, and we don't get his thought balloon about thinking about that beautiful girl, you know, having sex with her instead of Norbert. Right. That kind of stuff. So, it was interesting to me, like, it was a bit hard to get a read on. Well, he's... What, in the previous scene, he told yeah. um, Norbert that he was sexually frustrated. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it, it's pretty clear that he wants to shag this... Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. ...beautiful yeah. girl. Yeah. So, he says, come around to my flat, because he knows that Dora's going to Bonn. Yeah. Again, she doesn't go to Bonn for the same reasons. He makes up the story about the high school reunion yes. again. Yeah. The, the friend says, this is deeply suspicious. Yeah. This is exactly what a cheater would do, would immediately leave the room to go and phone a friend to try and figure out where he's yeah. going to have his rendezvous <laughs> instead. Yeah. She's sort of narrating it yeah. in real time. Yeah. It's quite good. Uh, again, he goes to see Norbert, and Norbert's just so outraged. Yes. But he's begging him and begging him, and eventually he agrees... Meanwhile, Metzger, the butcher, is wandering around in his leather underwear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which he is walking around in his underwear in the comic, too, I think, in that moment. It's so much funnier in the film. Yeah. Because this guy's deeply, yeah. deeply yeah. unattractive. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's very funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure enough, the scene again. It plays out much like it does in the comic. We they go to see Death in Venice. Some obnoxious people show up, thinking they're watching Rambo. Uh, Metzger punches the punch and beats them up. But Volta gets a blood nose. They go back to the apartment. They've meanwhile, Elka has brought out the bull power. Yes. Interest again. Once again, she never accuses Axel of being gay. That doesn't yeah, happen. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And when she's in the bathtub, instead of saying, are you gay as well, to the butcher, she says, bull power! <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but again, you know, he ends up sleeping with her. Yeah. It's been established that he's yeah. some sort of performative fake yeah. gay, because he loves soccer and does butchery. And yeah. Oh, and he, in the comic, there's a big question about, can he whistle? Walter <laughs> says, can you whistle? And he's like, yeah, I can whistle. Well, I've gay never seen a gay man whistle. that can whistle. Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, it's 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 this hallucination scene. This film doesn't have a good visual effects budget. Uh, Elka just sort of goes cross-eyed. Do you yeah. remember? Yeah, she's and then she be, turns she into a turkey. To be able to do it. I don't think it was special effects. She can cross her like opposite cross her. No, 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 that's what I mean. This was what was yeah, the substitute yeah. right, for a special right. effect. They said, "Can you pull a weird well, face?" And I she think said, a, "Well, I can go cross." You know what I think is worse though is the monkey on a hill scene. Mm. Because it's not there. It's they not just there. walk in and so he's we just, just don't know why he's on the, on the naked on the table. And it's kind of like, well, what? Because we had the scene of the birth of the bird. Yeah. Why what? can't we have something at least approaching that? This film doesn't do anything like that. There are no even that, as you said, psychedelic scene where Norbert imagines himself giving birth. It's really lame. Yeah. There's no effort. This ain't Suspiria. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It's really low effort. But yeah, but I think specifically that's a thing that, that works in a comic. To have yeah. him sit on a table like that. Yeah. Oh, with and those, the way with those we just have those panels very, of him as the 2001 Yeah, and the, and the very, his squiggly drawings work yeah. for that kind of a moment. To put that shot for shot on screen, which I've been praising throughout this episode for how much they actually put on screen is a weird... Just go for something else. If you're not going to have the monkey on a hill, actual monkey on a hill anyway, yeah. just go Why for something else. Why have on the couch? Just have him stretched out flat on the ground or something. Yes. Yeah, some sort of catat catatonia or something. Yeah. Or bound, running around like crazy. I don't know, something else. That it, but it didn't occur to him. Yeah. You know. yeah. Uh, and then... Again, plays much out like plays out much like the comic. Dora shows I... up. She gets a slap from Walter. Walter maybe. Did yes. that happen in the comic? I don't remember if it did or not. Thanks. Anyway, she's she's just, uh, that was a bit odd. <laughs> Why did and I write down the word melting? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds yeah. familiar. Ooh. Was something was somebody something melting? This was this was at, I wrote monkey on a hill in brackets, which means it didn't happen. And then I wrote melting, which means something. something Is this for the melting. comic or the film? Mel for the film. Interesting. I don't remember. Anyway, um, yeah. So it's the same thing where Norbert has to drive her to the hospital because yep. she goes into labor. Um, there's a bit of we get the same dumb gag about are you here for an appendix or a baby? Yeah, it's appendix removal or a, or a baby. And she says baby. And she says I have to call the doctor. Is it doctor? Do we have time for a baby today? And the doctor says no. <laughs> no, but in the comic it plays out more because we see what the doctor is doing instead of wanting yeah. to deliver a baby. It's, it's another example of it doesn't really make it the truncated jump. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I feel like there's I feel like there's a few things like that in the movie where it doesn't quite make the transition. Yeah. Um, kind of all the conversations resolving a lot of things happen in the car, in the two cars on the way over. Yes, um, with uh, Walter driving Axel and Norbert driving Dora to yes. the hospital. Yep. Yes, so it plays out almost the same, but there are some big changes here, whereas um, in this case, Axel arrives at the hospital, the baby's been born, he's kind yeah. of forgotten about it. Yep. And then Norbert's like, well, go down there and see the baby. And they go and they see it through the window. And then he's like... Yep. But this actually, is like before the old that... days where they would keep the baby in isolation yeah. and you had to ring a buzzer yeah. to get a nurse to bring your baby out so that you could look at it. Yeah. So actually, earlier he had the confrontation with Doro in the her room where she said, get out, I don't want to see you. Yes. He goes out, he talks to Norbert. Yep. Norbert's like, go see the baby. He goes and sees the baby. And then it ends with, I don't think, was there any resolution with Dora? Are they, they, they weren't, did they say they were going to, maybe he and Norbert talked about, 
he was going to get back together with Doro anyway. I don't think it's in any it doubt. It doesn't yeah. happen on screen. No, you're right. No, I don't think there's a doubt, but I think this is actually one of the best moments of this movie is the final shot okay. where it's Axel and Norbert going off and we have this male friendship that's happening, right. which is kind of what I think the movie has been trying to build to is the friendship between these two dudes. Oh, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe. Because that's the final shot. It's not of the hetero couple magically coming together and then being miserable afterwards. It's the final shot is not of Doro. Yeah. The final shot is of him and Norbert. Sure. Yeah, you know. I think and then right. there's a mid credit scene where they're singing. Yeah, and then yeah. they're singing the Max. They're singing the, the Max they're Love song. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One of those the three. Uh, well, it's, big band it's Walter, like Norbert, hits. and Axel singing. And again, it's like those those three are the buddy buddies. Uh, in this version. Yeah. Yeah, and that's kind of it. Okay, so, do we have any trivia? Uh, I did my best. Let's see what we've got. Alright, so, how did this movie do? This movie was a big success. Yeah. So it came out late 1994. You remember, you might remember last week where I talked about how the German kind of film industry tracks, like the French one, tracks by uh, ticket sales, yes. admissions, rather than by uh, kind of like a gross profit. This movie is sufficiently successful that it has both statistics available online. Okay. So it had six million admissions. Okay. Which is big. Yeah. Especially big for 1994. Which makes it one of the most successful German films of all time. Not quite in the top ten. Okay. But nearly there. I well, think Krell that, seemed to claim it was the most successful in 1994. It was. It was the most successful film that year. Up to that point. It was maybe, maybe okay. up to that point, okay. but it was certainly far and away the most yeah. successful film of 1994. Okay. Absolutely. It made, um, yeah, so 6 million admissions puts it, you remember, I think of the top 10 most successful German films of all time in Germany, the 10th film is something like 7 million admissions. Right. So the fact that it's at 6 million puts it probably at number 11 yeah. or number 12. So it's right up there. Uh, it made 60 million Deutschmarks, which is, I think, $43 million US. Okay. We don't have figures for its budget. But I think it made it back. Yeah. I don't think this film costs a lot of money to make. Yeah. Uh, and so it was definitely, uh, definitely successful. Yes. Absolutely. The, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the soundtracks by Max Rabe. We can hear, yeah, I'll pop on Facebook, the one of him singing the song about the gorilla in the zoo. Yeah, I might even pop it into the end music for the episode. Oh, well, brilliant. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> and, uh... So speaking of most successful German films of all time, Till Schweiger, who plays Axel, you know, he seems just sort of like a hot idiot, <laughs> has had, as I said, a very <laughs> successful career. Yeah. Not just as an actor, but as a director. Okay. He, in fact, directed a film called Kainohasen, which is the eighth most successful German film oh. of all time. It means uh, no-eared bunny. Huh. And, and speaking of German words that mean things... Back to the title, Der Bewerte Mann. So, no one's bothered to try and translate this title literally in all the various mm. versions of the title. The most desired man, maybe, maybe not. As I said, it seems to mean the man, the moved man, the man that was moved. Mm. Uh, I contacted, so I, I invite anyone who knows German to write in <laughs> yeah. and help me because I'm absolutely not an expert. But in what I've read, Bewerten means, you know, Bewegung in German seems to mean uh, movement. Yeah. So, and it can mean physical movement or it can mean emotional movement. Okay. So, the bewegte man means something like restless man hmm. or the man who is in more than one place at once. Okay. So, it, I, I'd say the title clearly means that he's bisexual well, or at least bi -curious. I think maybe, maybe not is a good title because I think is he isn't he would be yeah. like too literal yes yes so you want to be somewhere halfway that's not quite is he or isn't he maybe maybe not is pretty good because you don't know quite what it's about exactly from the title so you can't oh again we're getting your brilliant translator's <laughs> expertise here Kumar but obviously you can't just say the moved man. Mm. It wouldn't make any sense. But no. maybe, maybe not. Is he or isn't he? Maybe too well, obvious. The, the, the most literal title would be the moving up and down the spectrum man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But which makes it interesting, of course, that the film, he's not moving around on the spectrum. No. He sort of stays in one he's spot. He's the most he's desired the motion, man. He's the motionless man. Yeah. He's just 
So he's just the most desired. He's in the center being desired by everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. This film also won a lot of awards in 1994 and 1995. So it won the German Film Award, the Lola, which is sort of the German equivalent of the Oscars. Uh, Joachim Krill won Best Actor at the same awards. And Sönke Wortmann won Best Director. Huh. So it's kind of like a three award sweep yep. there. Yep. It also won the Bavarian Film Prize. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Different from the German Film Awards. Yeah. Not a synonym, apparently. Uh, it won the Golden Canvas Award. And it also won Best Film in the uh, the Jupiter Award, which I think I mentioned last week huh. as well. So, some people like this film in yeah, Germany. Absolutely. It didn't just make money. It won awards. <laughs> All right, should we do our votes? Yeah. Okay, comics. Hmm. Uh, I was ready... You know how I feel about grown-up comics? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got hundreds of them to get through, so you you better start liking them at some stage. Comics that aren't about that aren't you can't that aren't genre, you know, that aren't horror, science fiction, fantasy, superhero. I'm always deeply dubious about such comics. However, this comic is so funny. Yeah. So funny. Yeah. yeah. That uh, that I think it's a yay for me. Yeah, just def- definitely yay for me. I really enjoyed it. It was just a gag a minute. It was so good. Uh, very, as I said, very naturalistic. It just seemed. Lots of interesting characters, lots of good, like, organic sitcom situations yeah. um, just played out. The art was great for what it is. I mean, and the, the Casablanca gag, I think that's, that said it all, really. Unlike last week, where I found the art unsettling and unsavory, <laughs> yes. here I think the art is not only fine, but a part of the humour. Yeah. In that I said that, you know, we have these people who are ostensibly attractive yeah. or ostensibly regular folks yet they look like gargoyles yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and the contrast between their that the art yeah. and the dialogue talking about them yeah. is very amusing mm. Mm. so i really like yeah. that whereas of course in condom con, uh, killer condom it's it's a horror horror comedy comic so the horrific art it's not in spite of the story, it's part of the story, and mm. the whole thing is just kind of a bit... I didn't like that as much. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, the film. Oh, it's a yay for me. Okay. I actually, this went down very smooth for me. Uh, I laughed, I, I, and I liked the way it translated into the real world, as I said, how it just... To me, the, the foundation, as I said, the, of the comics was so solid, and they didn't mess with it. They just, like put it out there, put the same gags, the same dialogue, the same situations, for the most right. part. Uh, so it went down pretty smooth for me. Right. Uh, for me, it's more of a nay. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been pretty enthusiastic about it for the last hour. But, uh, as you say, I, I feel like I was carrying over a lot of my enthusiasm for the comic into the film. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big part of it. Yeah. Because I, I think this mo- this is a movie that could get made in Hollywood in 2024. This is about the level of where are we where are we at with this dialogue right. in Hollywood? Sure, sure. It's just I just don't. I, it's not as funny as the comic. That's true. Uh, I think, as I said, I think it's it. The, we have an inferior translation for the film. So a lot of the kind of I suppose a lot of the dialogue isn't as crackling and hilarious as it is from the yeah. Fun, from the but comic. part of it is that the comic has the space to have a conversation go for five or six pages. Well, that's like enough. about Doro smoking cigarettes. Yes. That is very like it's one line in the movie about her smoking cigarettes when she's pregnant, and yeah. in the comic it's probably like a two page sequence. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, and it's sort of odd too because it doesn't really seem like part of Axel's character. Like oh, yeah, we know, in the yeah. comic, we know he's kind of a controlling yeah. kind of jerk because of his jealousy mm. and so on and so forth. And it it's absolutely typical behavior for him to overcompensate in the area of jealously protecting Doro's health while at the same time looking for opportunities to cheat on her, <laughs> both with men and women. <laughs> but in the film, it's just sort of more... It's sort of like a throwaway. It's a sort of a moment that doesn't really connect with any yeah. of the other parts of the film. Yeah. So I maybe with a better... Maybe... like I mean... The review I read reviews. So I read a review in Variety magazine okay. that came out in 1994 when the film came out. So it was by a guy called Eric Hansen. So the, he must be a German speaker. Okay. So this is before it would have been translated into English. Okay. And he actually comes right out and says, "Quote: What makes the film work is its dry, sophisticated dialogue, mm-hmm. taken almost word for word from the originals." And I can't help but feel 
maybe we lost a bit in the in that sort of. I mean, our translation. I don't know. Your subtitles the same as my subtitles. Yeah. They were in Chinese and English. Mm. I can't help but feel that maybe they weren't up to the task. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. So it's a it's a nay for me. Okay. Yeah, but what about adaptation? Well. I was going to say yay coming into this conversation. Yeah, but I... And now I'm more on the nay side. <laughs> I've I sort think of you've been... Convinced, a... You've convinced me about the straight washing. I've really been banging on about it, haven't I? Yeah. But the other thing is I find recording these episodes, you read the comic and you come into the movie, probably... I do them one day apart. Yeah. And if they're very close, if the adaptation is close, then I tend to patch over the cracks in the movie with memories from the comic, either subconsciously sure. or consciously. Right, right, yeah. And it's like, oh, this happened because of this, or he said this, or this, but it didn't. That was in the comic, it's not in the movie. And actually, there are holes in the movie where if you hadn't read the comic, you wouldn't be able to fill those holes. Right. So I'm starting to realize that the, judging the adaptation is, like, patchy, like, I'm not sure if I'm <laughs> doing this right. <laughs> well. 87, 86, 7 episodes in. <laughs> This is the whole premise of our podcast. It's the whole premise, and it's I've been, screwed it up. It's been I've totally whole, screwed it up. Oh my god, the props of my world have been knocked away. Because um, watching the movie, I loved it. I, I laughed, and I was like, maybe wow. part of it was... And I was like, this is a great adaptation, because everything's there. You do like it when everything's there. Well, I mean, that's fine. Um, but you're right that it's kind of... Maybe... All right, to reward... I'm going to say nay, based on the straight washing. Sure. Yeah. And to reward that perspective, so this uh, review by Eric Hansen, he notes in Variety, this was in 94, he said, the comic's gay perspective has been straightened, quote, yeah. for the movie, with Axel no longer sexually undecided, mm. but simply a fish out of water, yeah. exploring the bizarre environment of his new landlord. And you'll be reassured to hear that Koenig himself criticised the okay. film for this. Okay. He, he didn't like that aspect of it. I do... That, you know, like, the only... the heter In the comic, the heterosexuals and homosexuals are both caricatured. Yes. You know, lampooned, yeah. made ridiculous. Yeah. Yet in the film, it's sort of really exclusively the homosexuals that are experiencing that treatment huh. with, their, with their drag parties. Yeah. And their... And that... And, and Metzger, the goofy butcher. You're right. And that's part of it is... The, their, the physical appearance of the heterosexuals yeah. is part of it. They're very glamorous. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and but, I would also agree with what you said about um, the, the, the sort of things like comedic timing. Yeah. So, like Shortcomings, which we did mm. last year, I think comic timing in comics is different from comic yes. timing in film. Yeah. And I think the film suffers from trying to reproduce the comic timing of yeah. Koenig's perfect... I, the scene where he goes back yeah. into the triple X cinema, which was one of the most perfect gags in the comic, the way that... It's actually a page turn. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is. You're right. It's, it's on, on the, the next, next page. page. Yeah. Right? right? That's crucial. And they tried to play it in the... And it's kind of it's funny fine, in the movie, but it's just not as... It's not like... Same. It's not like a laugh out loud moment like it was in the comic. And like you said, you can have as you pointed out, like, five hours ago, that you can have page after page of the same panel yes. where you fill it up with all of these funny dialogue. Yeah. You can't do that in no, a film. you're right. Yeah. Yeah. But I will say I do love that the final yeah. shot ends on uh, Axel and Norbert and their friendship. I like that too. And I, if they'd been a bit truer to that, maybe... Yeah. Throughout the whole movie, maybe if they'd been more adventurous in their adaptation and less, yeah, yeah, exact, yeah, gone yeah. for more of the friendship yeah. and less of yeah. the yeah. reproducing. So uh, really I'm, I'm going to. Are you going to for I'm adaptation? Going to, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. Uh, okay, uh, so please uh, like, rate, review, subscribe on whatever your platform is. Uh, please join us on Facebook for all sorts of links and memes. Please join us on Instagram. Yep. For reels, yeah, and it, our episode art, which is probably we're, not we're putting a lot of work into these reels, yes. <laughs> so please go on Instagram and look uh, at them. Please send us emails. The email is in the help me with notes. my German. Yes, we need that. Uh, or you know, comment or um, can be reached through Twitter or Instagram. Now you can even DM us on Instagram. Yeah, please join our Patreon at. Patreon.com slash comic book movie oblivion, all one word, because we do need the dough for hosting fees 
books, DVDs, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's a DVD comics. about, there's a documentary about Ralph Koenig out that there. Nobody can get. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere. But you know, money talks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so next week we will be doing Robot Dreams. Right. So this is another... Well, you say next week, but we're going to have a high end. Yes, time. another skip week, sorry. So there will be another skip week. So it'll be two weeks down the road. Robot Dreams is another one like The Killer that came out, and I did not know it was based on a comic. Amazing. But it was just pre... It's from last year. was nominated for uh, Best Animated Feature at the Academy Awards. Did not know it was based on a comic until many weeks later, somehow, I think. And I think that's about all there is to say about that. Baut sich mal ein eine Villa, dann ist es draußen, wer weiß auf wo. Mein bester Freund hat auch eine Villa, doch die liegt mitten direkt im Zoo. Ich bin oft mit ihm beisammen, weil wir aus derselben Gegend stammen. Mein Gorilla hat eine Villa im Zoo. Mein Gorilla lebt zufrieden und froh. Er kennt keine Politik und es ist sein höchstes Glück, die Gemahlin zu jucken. Und auf jeden den Start aus der Villa ganz im Kern voll Verachtung zu spucken. Mein Gorilla hat eine Villa im Zoo. Mein Gorilla, na der Junge ist so. Frau Gorilla, die hält still, wenn er sie mal küssen will. Wenn er will, ja dann will er. Mein Gorilla. Frau Grenadier, still, wenn er sie mal küssen will, wenn er will, ja, dann will er.